I'm tired of, uh, you know, giving up the uh, imaging to someone who's not going to do a, I don't think a very thorough and, you know, comp, you know, comprehensive and compassionate right. uh, examination. And so I'm going to bring it to my, keep it in my office. Hi, right, Paul Camping, Executive Director of ISLIS. Thank you for joining us as we continue our 2023 webinar series on liver disease. Today, we're starting a two-part series focused on using 2D shear wave elastography and ultrasound imaging in a private office setting of a gastroenterology practice. We have a very special guest, Dr. Alan Weston from Joplin, Missouri, who's also an ISLIS board member and has been running the Digestive Health Center who, of the four states where he started it over 20 years ago. He got his gastroenterology fellowship at the University of Kansas School of Medicine. Then he stayed on with the University of Kansas Medical Center for over 12 years as a so associate professor of medicine and also became the GI hepatology section chief at the Kansas City VA Medical Center. He's published over 50 original manuscripts, presented over 100 abstracts at international meetings, and has written two book chapters. He currently also holds a clinical associate professor appointment at the University of Oklahoma Medical School. I have to thank our corporate sponsor, Advisor Medical Technologies, for their financial support to make this and many other webinar series happen. And with that, enjoy the webinar. Dr. Weston, thank you for joining us today. Could you just tell the audience a little bit about your practice, the types of patients that you see? Uh, I'm assuming based on our previous conversations, you're not just a liver guy. That's correct. I, I, I see all the entire gamut of uh, gastrology, hepatology. Um, don't turn anybody away. But a, uh, but a big part of my practice since uh, I got involved with you know liver disease when I was at the VA. It was a very important priority at the VA hepatitis C eradication back then. And now you know jump forward 20 years and the uh, the uh, big elephant in the room is the, uh, fatty liver disease and naphtol and uh, cirrhosis. So that's a big part of my practice today. All right. So you you've been in the um in this specialty for over 25 years. Can you tell me about the progression of the different diagnostic methods you've used throughout the years and your experience with the different ones? Yes, in fact, uh, you know, 30 years ago, you know, fatty liver was, you know, diagnosed by an old sound and there, were, there was a very prominent journal that said, you know, fatty liver is benign disease, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about it. And uh, at that time, 30 years ago, we didn't worry about it. It was just something you just sort of ignored. But now, now it's it's a huge part of our. It's a huge economic and medical burden, and it's a it's a serious disease. You know, leading it's a leading cause of liver failure in the United States right now. Yeah. So you know, 30 years ago, we didn't have ultrasound anything. We we just had an ultrasound saying fat liver, and then uh, we developed you know these serologic tests which uh, I never was a big fan of. And I think the, the best one, Rao, is the, called the FIB4 score. It's very simple. Looks at a patient's age and their simple liver tests, AST and ALT and platelet count. But there's a whole bunch of uh, propriety, propriety uh, you know, labs that have these, these so-called uh, accurate uh, staging of a patient's uh, steatosis severity and fibrosis severity. And I used to order those, you know, 15 years ago, and I stopped ordering those 10 years ago or seven years ago when I got the, when I incorporated, you know, in-office ultrasonography with elastography. I've, I've totally stopped ordering these, these fancy lab tests. Did you see a limitation with the tests or what was the, the reason that you wanted to stop using them or felt that you could? You know, I just didn't, I, a lot of me just didn't trust, uh, you know, uh, you, you had patients that, you know, you, you clinically said, man, this person has got some serious liver disease and you'd send away this, you know, fiber sure score and it'd say, oh, they don't have any advanced scarring or advanced steatosis, don't worry about them. And you're going, hold it, you're, the patient's in front of you. <laughs> yeah. And you're saying, 
there's some, there's a disconnect. I see. And 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 the, some of these propriety tests that you know LabCorp and Quest and other people have, they you know they're a little pricey, and uh, and some of them you know uh, they're skewed if uh, there can be skewed by you know a certain lab test that can be erroneously wrong. I mean off for a different reason gets it gives it a false uh, reading. I see. So you mentioned just a second ago that you incorporated ultrasound in your practice about seven years ago. Um, you know, that makes you both a pioneer and an expert in your field for ultrasound. What was, was there a compelling re what was the compelling reason for you to do it versus sending it off to, let's say a radiologist? Cause that by and large, um, would you say that's kind of this, the norm in your field is to refer the patient out to imaging? It, it has been. And, uh, you know, initially we did that, but there's no, there's no patient, you know, uh, doctor interaction. You know, if the patient's in your clinic, you've connected with the patient. It's a doctor-patient relationship. When you send to the radiologist, you know, the technician does it and they don't talk to the patient. You know, a radiologist reads it in a dark room, doesn't even, you know, never sees the patient. And, and, and I got very frustrated, you know, in, in my community where we'd have, and this is this true story, we had patients that were getting ultrasounds done and they were coming back, you know, limited examination of the liver, you know, cannot find the liver, cannot find the gallbladder, you know, uh, cannot find the portal vein. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I mean, and so what? Uh, I just, you just, you just wanted to, and you want to give your patient an answer. Right. And so I just said, let's, you know, I'm tired of, uh, you know, giving up the uh, imaging to someone who's not going to do a, I don't think a very thorough and, you know, comp, you know, comprehensive and compassionate right. uh, examination. And so I'm going to bring it to my, keep it in my office okay. and give a patient, you know, a real time, you know, uh, answer. Okay, so I've got a lot of questions surrounding that. One of the things I hear from some of your, um, your colleagues and peers is uh, they're not trained in ultrasound. Um, how did you add it to your practice when, like, what was your training like? Did you have any or did you learn it from YouTube, for instance? That's well, a good- YouTube wasn't around probably, but- That's right, it wasn't. and. Uh... It was a multi-prong, you know, I, I was trained uh, at the university in endoscopic ultrasound by a radiologist in the 90s. And so I think any gastrologist that does endoscopic ultrasound with a scope uh, incorporating in-office ultrasound with a transdominal ultrasound probe is, is, is uh, seamless. There's no issues. So describe the technology. A lot of um, some discussions that I have it seems there's a little bit of a misunderstanding when you say ultrasound um, versus uh, trans, transient elastography, or you know, some people refer to it by a brand name, um, you know, fiber scan, right, is what they call it, but it's transient elastography. What is the ultrasound technology? Can it replace the transient elastography that a lot of people talk about? <coughs> Is it a complementary tool? Tell me about the technology, if you don't mind, and how, how you use it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, transabdominal ultrasound, you know, is uh, superior to, you know, vibrate. Vibration elastography is just vibrating the liver. You're vibrating the liver. And that's why the patient feels a little thump um, every time you fire the probe. So it vibrates the liver and it sends back a signal and you capture the signal. And you get this, you know, magical score saying, you know, this is how stiff the liver is. And you get another magical score that says how much fat the liver has. Right. And the problem is, is you, you know, you're not really seeing what exactly what you're firing it into. You don't, you don't have an image of an actual liver organ in front of you. Whereas the transit bound roll down, uh, you know, you can see the liver. You can avoid vascular structures. You can avoid the gallbladder. You can avoid intervening colon, intervening lung. And so you can make sure your ultrasound probe is exactly on the liver. 
and this is a great deal of my number of referrals. I get a lot of patients referred to me, Paul, that there's new patients for, you know, abnormal imaging. That is, they got an imaging from another facility or another doctor saying fatty liver or, you know, nodular liver. And I tell patients is that I tell them, well, why? And they ask me, why are you repeating the ultrasound in your office? And I say, well, we got an ultrasound that has special software. And, and, I, and I tell my patients, it's like, you know, you've got, you got an ultrasound done by, you know, uh, the guy that sells Yugos or, you know, a Yugo, you got a Yugo uh, ultrasound, which is, and, you know, we're going to, we're going to give you the Rolls Royce ultrasound today. That's <laughs> got a lot of, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I do explain, use those terms for my patients so they understand, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to, you know, why am I doing this ultrasound? And I, and, but we didn't tell them, it, you know, it's very, very, you know, advanced software and it can see things that other ultrasounds can't see. Yeah. So you mentioned the vibration controlled um, transient elastography or VCTE. The ultrasound uses something called uh, 2D shear wave elastography. Um, and it, it, does it give you, do you feel confident with the quantitative output you get from your ultrasound system versus the VCTE equipment? Yeah, oh, it, 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 we sure do because uh, I, uh, you know, you can trust when you, when you're actually seeing the liver live in front of you and, uh, you can, you, you know, you can, you know, you're on the top of the liver. Uh, and I, I think the, and the, what's the beauty of it is, you know, I've been, I've been blessed that I, I bought your first generation, you know, shear wave, the last machine, machine called supersonic. And now I, I'm honored to be one, you know, to buy the, the newest edition. And the newest edition is just, is just, uh, it's just uh, incredible. Okay. It is, it's a, a game changer. And, and, um, awesome. it, but as far as, you know, uh, one thing we get with the transient, uh, you, you, uh, they don't like to talk about this, but, you know, sometimes you put the probe on the patient and you fire it 10 times and you get 10 uh, readings that are within, you know, their special uh, standard deviation and you can accept it. But I have some patients you fire the probe 50 times, 50 Five times. Zero. Yeah, this vibration probe and you vibrate them 50 times and you get, an, you get, a, you get a, a reading that's quote, acceptable only after you've thrown out about 30 values, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's really, it's really concerning to me that, you know, you're, you've got a machine and you're throwing out values that were quote, you know, adequate but in order to, to meet their guidelines of getting the, you know, their core top uh, is a 30% that you, you know, you have to throw out all these values. And the beauty of the supersonic shear wave is that um, you can, you can, you put the cue box on it. You put the elastography on the liver, you yeah. get a, you get a cue box. And if it doesn't say 90, 90% or greater, you don't accept it. You don't even, you don't even take a picture of it. So you, you only, you, you only get an image and you and you want to and, and in fact we're getting 100 percent with the new with the new machine we're getting we're getting uh the, uh, the image is so incredible that that we're getting 100 percent uh you know confidence intervals confidence yeah conf thank you paul yeah confidence it's, it's, i've never seen that i have never seen 100 percent we've had 99s with the older machine you know but we you know we always get above 90 but this new machine is, you know, 98, 99, 100s. It's just, and it's, 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 it's quick. Awesome. That's the other thing with the uh, transient vibration is, uh, you know, we might see 15 patients, uh, you know, in us uh, for doing transient vibration. And, and if you have to shoot them, if you have to fire the probe 50 times for each patient, that adds up. It's not, you know, it's not, it's, it's, and it puts you behind clinic. You are um, probably one of the few guys that does it in their office and, uh, you know, versus having them go to the radiology, to the hospital, which probably, I'm assuming, costs them more money out of pocket than <coughs> them just having you do it because you have the technology. Um, what sort of reactions do you get from patients, if any? Patients are so grateful. Yeah. 
a lot of patients come to your office and they're nervous. You know, do doctor, do I have fatty liver? Yes or no. Do I have severe fatty liver? Yes or no. And do I have cirrhosis? Yes or no. And when they can leave your office and, and you can answer, no, you don't have to worry about it. They are tremendous relieved. Sure. Yeah. Or, or likewise, uh, you know, just, just on Monday or Tuesday, we had a patient that we found out that she, she was referred for, you know, fatty liver, that she did have severe fatty liver, but she didn't have any advanced fibrosis. And that in itself was a relief. And then she's, and it's a game changer for her. Cause she says she, cause now, you know, now, and we told her, you know, if you lose weight, you know, you exercise, you eat right, you know, take vitamin E. And so now she's leaving her office with a uh, tremendous confidence that it's not too late. And then she can intervene and, and make a change in her life. That's awesome. You don't get that. If you don't get that, if you send it out somewhere else, 